from the Allison B. Parker Studio in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University, this is Breeze TV. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Caitlin Merriman. And I'm Sydney Jacksheimer. Thanks for joining us on Breeze TV. On Tuesday, millions of voters around the country cast their votes for numerous congressional and gubernatorial races. Democrats picked up governorship in seven states and reclaimed control of the House of Representatives, while Republicans retained control of the Senate. The Georgia governor's races, Arizona and Florida Senate races, and 13 representative races have not officially been called as recounts are being done. Here in Virginia, Tim Kaine has been reelected as senator, and our delegation of the House of Representatives will be comprised of four Republicans and seven Democrats. Here in the 6th District, Ben Klein was elected to replace retiring uh, Bob Goodlatte, and Chris Jones and Sal Romero were elected to the Harrisonburg City Council. You can find the full election coverage on our Facebook page. Shortly before midnight in Thousand Oaks, California, Wednesday night, a man armed with a gun entered the Borderline Bar and Grill. The bar was hosting a college country night, and it was packed with college students. At least a dozen people were killed, including Sheriff Deputy Ron Hellis, who was the first one to respond. The officers went in and made re-entry. They found him already deceased. He was found inside uh, an office just adjacent to the entry to the bar. Police have identified him as Ian David Long. According to the Department of Defense, Long was, an active duty, Long was on active duty with the U.S. Marine Corps up until March 2013. Authorities say he, they have had several run, uh, minor run-ins with Long in the past. Harrisonburg history will be rewritten because of a JMU professor's discovery. Breeze TV's senior reporter Anna Saunders tells us about the research that went into proving the Thomas Harrison House downtown did not actually belong to the founder of this town after all. Carol Nash entered what she believed to be the founder of Harrisonburg's house just over one year ago out of curiosity. I was just always taken with this house, this idea that there is this old stone house that has survived. But she discovered much more. So we discovered something we weren't expecting. We discovered artifacts that told us this house was not as old as people had believed it to be. Using her archaeology background, that's part of a horse tooth. Nash and several JMU students discovered that the trees used to build the house were cut down after Thomas Harrison had died. And that was the most convincing piece of evidence that the house did not belong to him. You sort of say, uh-oh, <laughs> when that happens, you're because this is nothing to mess around with. I mean, this is the history of this place. Nash presented her findings to the city, and while there was some surprise from the council, the city is prepared to work with her as she continues to find answers. As a person who grew up here in Harrisonburg, this is my hometown, I hope we can have a better understanding of, the, of Thomas Harrison and his family, but also of, of the history of this community and region, really. Nash looks forward to her future discoveries and what answers the house can provide about early 19th century Harrisonburg and who actually lived there. But even though it's not Thomas Harrison's house, it's still a surviving stone house from the late 18th, early 19th century. It's still part of early Harrisonburg and there's still lots of stories. Reporting for Breeze TV in downtown Harrisonburg, I'm Anna Saunders. Exit 245, welcome its alum back to JMU this weekend. Breeze TV's Grace James shows us how the a cappella group celebrated 20 years of brotherhood. From practice. To performance. Exit 245 has spent weeks preparing to welcome alumni to the stage once again. But the returning members had just one night to get it right. We picked the songs, but beyond that, there's no real practice. So it'll be like a one day crash course in trying to remember these songs and be able to perform them on stage. But I think it'll all come together. But for the a cappella group, things just seem to all fall in place. To kind of set the stage, my freshman year, we sang our first concert uh, in the student union with like maybe 50 people. We had enough snacks to feed everybody in the audience. So for it to grow to where it is now and recording albums and, and big concerts, uh, I think it's just a testament to the talent in the group. Since 1998, members of the group say the sense of brotherhood is what drives Exit 245 success. We look good. You know, we weren't thinking 20 years down the road. We were 
barely 20 years old ourselves. So uh, it's, ex it's so exciting to see how great the group has grown and all the accomplishments they've achieved since we started the group 20 years ago. Even after years without practice, the values of the organization remain constant. I came to a rehearsal and was completely amazed and stunned by what I was watching because I just couldn't believe how talented these guys were. Reporting in Harrisonburg, Virginia for Breeze TV, I'm Grace James. Coming up on Breeze TV, furry friends are brought to downtown Harrisonburg for the first annual pup crawl. Plus, we hear from JMU students about their enrollment experiences. All up next on Breeze TV. The first annual pup crawl brought furry friends to downtown Harrisonburg last Saturday. The Harrisonburg Rockingham County SPCA teamed up with local businesses to raise money for the animals. Local breweries and restaurants created signature drinks to celebrate the event and donated proceeds, proceeds to the SPCA from drinks purchased during the event. There were even dogs along the way that could be adopted, including Pudge McKenzie, a fan favorite among participants. Pup crawlers were able to take whichever route they wanted through participating local businesses, raising money at every stop while enjoying refreshing beverages. All to benefit the animals, um, all the proceeds from the event come back to the shelter and they will be used to help pay for food and the shelter and um, all the things that we give the animals on a regular basis um, and give them a chance to get adopted. The SPCA hopes that the pup crawl will grow into a favorite Harrisonburg tradition as they continue to raise money for their furry friends. A federal appeals court rejected the Trump administration to bid the cancel uh, DACA, um, an Obama-era program. DACA short, short for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals has provided protection and benefits to roughly 800,000 undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. when they were just children. The case is now almost surely to be reviewed by the Supreme Court, according to the Wall Street Journal, where the nine, nine judges will have the final say on the executive action. This week began the process of enrolling in spring classes for JMU students. Breeze TV's Colby Johnson was on the quad to talk with students about the enrollment process. With enrollment having begun this week, I headed to the quad to ask a few JMU students about their enrollment experiences. Um, I'm in kind of stressed out. I've been trying to talk to my counselors about it. And, you know, all the dates are like after I have to get it done. So I'm going to try to do it myself, I guess. I'm stressed about enrollment week um, in the sense that I don't know what classes are going to be filled up and you can only fill up for I think it's 17 at first and then the other ones you have to wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stressed especially because I have to figure it out with studying abroad. So I have to figure out which courses go which here at JMU but my academic advisor has been helpful. So. And um, I'm a psychology major so I applied to be in the major but I don't know if I'm accepted until like the end of the semester, so signing up for my major class, I have to wait until January. I think that uh, it's kind of with your academic advisor, especially with studying abroad for me in particular, it's kind of like they don't have like a set curriculum for studying abroad and how the courses match up with the ones here at JMU. I think that they could work on that a little bit more and maybe have a specialty for an academic advisor. I think the enrollment process is relatively solid. Um, I mean like it's pretty easy to like search up classes and stuff if you have the classes before um, so you know what to look up. And at least as far as enrollment goes on my Madison, I think that's perfect. It's pretty easy to navigate. Reporting for Breeze TV in Harrisonburg, I'm Colby Johnson. Coming up next, Sarah has sports for us. What's the update? Well, Sydney and Caitlin, we're going to take a look at football's tough road loss last weekend and men's and women's successful start to their seasons. This is Breeze TV. Welcome to Breeze TV Sports Wrap. I'm Sarah Salzman. Football traveled to New Hampshire to take on the Wildcats last Saturday and lost 35 to 24. The Dukes had a rocky start as early in the first, Ben DiNucci was sacked for a loss, which caused a fumble recovered by the Wildcats. UNH's first drive resulted in a touchdown on a Trevor Knight to Kieran Presley 29 yard pass in only three plays for the Wildcats. Danucci landed in hot water once again as Wild Wildcat Rick Elson picked him off and ran the ball in for a touchdown. 
JMU gave Danucci a break and put redshirt junior Cole Johnson in for the remainder of the game. But Johnson was also intercepted in the first half by Wildcat even Evan Horn, who ran it 30, 75 yards for a touchdown, leaving the Dukes behind at the half with a score of 21 to 3. JMU outscored UNH 21 to 14 in the second half with touchdowns by Cardin Johnson, Trey Sharp, and Cole Johnson, but the Dukes' new tempo came too late for a comeback. Sports rep reporter Paige Ellenberg is live from Santerra Park to give us a preview of men's soccer CAA tournament debut set for seven tonight. Paige. Reporting to you live from a rainy Santerra Park, I'm Paige Ellenberger. The CAA men's soccer tournament is well underway and in just less than 10 minutes, we will watch the number two UNC Wilmington Seahawks face against the third ranked Hofstra Pride. The Seahawks had a bye week coming into this matchup. However, the Hofstra Pride okay, beat Northeastern, the Northeastern Huskies 1-0 this past weekend. Later on tonight, we will see your top-ranked James Madison University Dukes face against the reigning CAA champions, the fifth-ranked William and Mary Tribe. Now, that's going to be an interesting matchup because... The Tribe beat James Madison last season in the CAA championships right back here at home. One to zero and a heartbreaking last minute goal. Reporting to you live, I'm Paige Ellenberger. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks, Paige. Men and women's basketball both tipped off their season this week. Tuesday, the men faced local opponent EMU in a decisive 86 to 58 victory. It was an explosive way for the Dukes to open their season with four players, Darius Banks, Matt Lewis, Stucky Mosley, and Greg Jones. Banks also tied the program record for steals in a game with his seven. Achieved last by um, Andre Nation in 2014, Jamie shot 51.4% from the field and forced 12 turnovers in the first half, giving the Dukes a comfortable 48-27 lead heading into halftime. Freshman Deshaun Parker and Jonathan Hicklin made their first collegiate points, and sophomore Dwight Wilson broke his previous career high rebounds by three by chalking up um, 12 total against the Royals. The team racked up 14 steals and nine blocks, and marks the third time in four years the Dukes have won their season opener. Women's basketball played in an exhibition, uh, exhibition game last Saturday against Post University, defeating them 94-44, but they tipped off their regular season Thursday night against George Washington with a 50-37 victory. JMU kept the Colonials on the defensive for the first three minutes of the game with a 10-0 run. In the third quarter, George Washington outscored the Dukes 16-15, trying to turn the tide of the game. But defense stepped up and held the Colonials to just four points in the final quarter as they shot just 23.5 from the floor. Kamaya Smalls led the scoring with 14 points, followed by Lexi Barrier of 12. Logan Reynolds led the team in blocks with four, just one shy of tying her career high. Smalls and Reynolds also racked up five assists, and Kayla Cooper Williams snagged 13 rebounds with 11 from the defensive end. Catch men's soccer tonight from Santerra Park at 7, men's basketball from ECU at 7.45, and football's final home game of the regular season tomorrow at 2. Be sure to tune in to Breeze TV Sports Rec Rep after the holiday break. Now back to you, Caitlin and Sydney. Thanks, Sarah. Coming up next, Breeze TV's David Ramirez shows us how one student is not only working towards a successful military career, but is breaking boundaries in the process. Plus, Carnival for a Cause is raising money for different nonprofits in the Valley. All this and more coming up next on Breeze TV. This is Breeze TV. Ariana Grande is Billboard's 2018 Woman of the Year. Grande held the number one spot on the Billboard 200 Albums chart three times over the course of her career. Beyond music, the singer is known for using her star power to support causes like gun control, LGBTQ rights, and Black Lives Matter. Billboard's VP of Content praised Grande for standing up for her beliefs. Grande joins a list of popular singers who have been previously honored as Woman of the Year, including Selena Gomez, Madonna, Lady Gaga, and Taylor Swift. She will be honored at the Billboard Women in Music Dinner and Awards Gala in New York next month.
The JMU ROTC has a long history of instilling the values of hard work, discipline, and camaraderie for aspiring members of the military. Breeze TV's David Ramirez shows us how one student is not only working towards a successful military career, but is breaking boundaries in the process. Brittany Butler has already completed her eighth lap on the track, while most people are snoozing their alarms. Nice job, Chung. Butler is selfless with her time and energy, taking on leadership roles as president of both ROTC and Alpha Phi Sorority. This year especially, being in charge of so many people, like being able to impact so many people, it's important that these organizations come before my schoolwork, which is hard to say. After a 10 week long period of physically and mentally challenging tests, Butler was selected as a member of the JMU ROTC Ranger Club, the first woman to do so in 10 years. She's incredibly smart, very physically adept, and um, has a ton of mental agility. So, you know, everything she did helped that team. And so when she joined us, the bigger group, like, it just made us better. Butler views her personal achievements as a group effort. I became so close with our candidate class from the start, it was like I, even on the worst nights where I was like, I am going to quit tonight, it was like I couldn't leave them. Butler has found the strength to hold her own from the example of the strong woman in her life. My mom, it, she has 30 years in military service as well. So with that, like I just want to be able to make her proud and kind of write my own story. She hopes her accomplishments show other women that they too can make history. Having a female, especially like as my size, I, I am a little bit shorter and smaller, being able for them to look at me and be like, oh, if she can do it, I can do it. Like, that's what I want them to do. It. Reporting for Breeze TV in Harrisonburg, I'm David Ramirez. Some eager Timberlake fans may be disappointed in the next coming days. The singer has postponed his November 12th and November 13th shows due to bruised vocal cords. The postponements uh, postponement started last Wednesday with his show at Madison Square Garden. Timberlake says it was on doctor's orders because his vocal cords are severely bruised. The November shows are rescheduled to be in February of the coming year, and his next show is expected to be on November 16th in Portland, Oregon. The Student Government Association hosted the annual Dukes debate last Tuesday. I took a look at how two student representatives from college Republicans and college Democrats joined together to share their party's platforms in a civil manner. Students piled into Madison Union Ballroom to listen to the most pressing issues that our country is currently facing. But those are all uh, things that help everyday working Americans. I will introduce a policy topic. They discuss their party stances on topics such as health care reform, immigration laws, and abortion. Having civil discourse and actually coming to events like this is what gets the conversation going. So I was more than happy to um, not hear my opponents, but hear my fellow Americans. The goal, for students to witness both sides of the political spectrum so they could become more informed voters in the midterm elections. I really want the youth of JMU to be engaged in voting because um, youth vote is such a big uh, part of America and we just do not turn out in the right numbers that we should be. The college Republicans and college Democrats want to demonstrate that civil debates are possible even when speaking with those who have opposing viewpoints. We are actually capable of having a cordial, serious debate on the issues and you don't see that too much in politics today. But the fact that we can do that tonight shows that anybody can go out there and start having a serious dialogue about the most important issues we face ahead of the midterm elections. The work of these two groups will hopefully continue influencing more students in the future. If we keep up this, this momentum and attitude of civility and just keep and then keep promoting civic engagement, I think that will encourage you know students to, to uh, get out and vote more and be more informed in, in the political world. Reporting for Breeze TV in Harrisonburg. But with that being said, I'm optimistic about this country's future. I'm Sydney Jacksheimer.
So this is our last show of the season before Thanksgiving and Christmas. So our next show will be in 2019. Can you believe it? So crazy. It's been so much fun. So yes. exciting. Mm -hmm. But on a happy note, Thanksgiving break. Uh, yes, what are you I most know. excited for in your favorite dish? Um, I think I'm excited for a break from schoolwork, of course. Um, and then I like the sides of Thanksgiving. Mashed potatoes. Big mashed potatoes person. What big about you? Big mashed potatoes yeah. girl. <laughs> I am my grandmother's signature sweet potato casserole. It's hands down. I wish I could have it all year long. Oh my goodness, yeah, that sounds so good. Can't wait for that. <laughs> well, that's it for us this week on Breeze TV. Thanks for joining us. Have a wonderful break. <laughs> All about that sweet potato casserole, man. Ooh, uh...